Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. I just thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us in this venture, for participating with us, for going through the word of the Lord together. I know that the word of the Lord is a blessing. I pray that these overviews are a blessing to you and that we can just get closer to the Lord in understanding his word a little bit better, but also being able to follow through uh, the timeline to be able to know when things happen and how things happen just to get a basic overview as we read through the word of the Lord. Today we return to the book of Jeremiah and we're going to go through chapters 46, 47 and 48. Now these passages deal with the destruction of the pagan nations surrounding Israel and those that have a checkered past with Israel and Judah. Now in chapter 46 we read of the prophecy of of the overthrow of Pharaoh's army and how they will be conquered by Nebuchadnezzar, the instrument of the judgment of the Lord. Now we read in the previous chapters in the book of Jeremiah how the Jews went down to Egypt for protection. And Jeremiah spoke against it as the Lord told them to stay in Judah. Now this passage in chapter 46 speaks about how mighty Egypt was, how fair and how beautiful it looked from the outside but they are going to be destroyed and scattered and the assumed safe haven for the people would now be a desolation and would be destroyed. But then the Lord comforts Jacob and Jacob is comforted in that the Lord tells them that even though he will destroy the nations that have come against them, all the surrounding nations, all of the pagan nations, he will not utterly destroy Israel, but save them and return them to the land of promise after their punishment is fulfilled. Then we get to chapter 47, and this is a very short chapter dealing with the destruction of the Philistines, which Jeremiah prophesied to them before Pharaoh smote Gaza. The destruction will come from the north, as we have read spoken to the other nations that came to their time of judgment. And what is this north speaking about? Well, we've seen that every time it spoke about the Babylonians, the Chaldeans coming against the people, it says that they were the army that came from the north. So we know that they are going to be destroyed as well here, the Philistines. And then we get to chapter 48, in which the Lord, through the prophet Jeremiah, proclaims the judgment of Moab for their many corruptions, which are listed in detail in this chapter. Because they trusted in themselves, they have no savior to call upon now. Now this is so fitting in our day, because we have made gods in our image. We're still we have assumed ourselves as being the pinnacle of morality and justice. And so who do we call to and who do we plead with for our salvation when things fall apart? When we see that morality is just gone into the pit, when we see that there is no justice anymore, who do we call on? Because we have made ourselves that pinnacle. We tend to go further in the evil, which is so strange, but this is the reality that we face. We see in this passage that even the religious leaders have done so deceitfully. Again, how accurate is this for us in our day? And if you want to know how fitting it is in our day, we see that they became apathetic. They had delusions of grandeur. They rejoiced in the calamity of others. They were proud and they were deceitful in themselves. Thus the Lord has brought them into a time of pain and destruction. And that can be so relatable to us that is so relatable to us and our age and so we need to be aware that our time of destruction and pain is upon us and we need to be ready for the Lord to catch us and take us away so we see then that it says that the Lord will yet restore Moab in the latter days my goodness this is such a powerful reading today what a reading today I hope it is a blessing to you I know it will be but I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 46. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Gentiles. Against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates in Carchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon smote in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Order ye the buckler and shield and draw near to battle. Harness the horses, and get up, ye horsemen, and stand forth with your helmets. Burbish the spears, and put on the brigandines. Wherefore have I seen them dismayed, and turned away back? And their mighty ones are beaten down, and are fled apace, and look not back. For fear was round about, saith the Lord. Let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble, and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. 
Who is this that cometh up as a flood, whose waters are moved as the rivers? Egypt riseth up like a flood, and his waters are moved like the rivers. And he saith, I will go up and will cover the earth. I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries. And the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up into Gilead and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. The nations have heard of thy shame, and thy cry hath filled the land. For the mighty man hath stumbled against the mighty, and they are fallen both together. The word that the Lord spake to Jeremiah the prophet, how Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon should come and smite the land of Egypt. Declare ye in Egypt, and publish in Migdal, and publish in Noph, and in Tarpanes. Say ye, Stand fast, and prepare thee. For the sword shall devour round about thee. Why are thy valiant men swept away? They stood not because the Lord did drive them. He made many to fall, yea, one fell upon another. And they said, Arise, and let us go again to our own people, and to the land of our nativity from the oppressing sword. They did cry there, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He hath passed the time appointed. As I live, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, surely as Tabor is among the mountains, and as Carmel by the sea, so shall he come. O thou daughter dwelling in Egypt, furnish thyself to go into captivity, for Noph shall be waste and desolate without an inhabitant. Egypt is like a very fair heifer, but destruction cometh, it cometh out of the north. Also her hired men are in the midst of her like fatted bullocks, for they also are turned back and are fled away together. They did not stand, because the day of their calamity was come upon them and the time of their visitation. The voice thereof shall go like a serpent, for they shall march with an army and come against her with axes as hewers of wood. They shall cut down her forest, saith the Lord, though it cannot be searched because they are more than the grasshoppers and are innumerable. The daughter of Egypt shall be confounded. She shall be delivered into the hand of the people of the north. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saith, Behold, I will punish the multitude of No and Pharaoh and Egypt with their gods and their kings, even Pharaoh and all them that trust in him. And I will deliver them into the hand of those that seek their lives and into the hand of Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servants. And afterward it shall be inhabited as in the days of old, saith the Lord. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, saith the Lord. For I am with thee, for I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee. But I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. Chapter 47 The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Philistines before that Pharaoh smote Gaza. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, waters rise up out of the north, and shall be an overflowing flood, and shall overflow the land and all that is therein, the city and them that dwell therein. Then the men shall cry, and all the inhabitants of the land shall howl. At the noise of the stamping of the hoofs of his strong horses, at the rushing of his chariots, and at the rumbling of his wheels, the fathers shall not look back to their children for feebleness of hands. Because of the day that cometh to spoil all the Philistines, and to cut off from Tyrus and Zidon every helper that remaineth. For the Lord will spoil the Philistines, the remnant of the country of Kaphtor. Boldness is come upon Gaza. Ashkelon is cut off with the remnant of their valley. How long wilt thou cut thyself? O thou sword of the Lord, how long will it be ere thou be quiet? Put up thyself into thy scabbard, rest and be still. How can it be quiet, seeing the Lord hath given it a charge against Ashkelon and against the seashore? There hath he appointed it. Chapter 48 Against Moab thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Woe unto Nebo, for it is spoiled. Kiriathaim is confounded and taken. Misgab is confounded and dismayed. There shall be no more praise of Moab. In Heshbon they have devised evil against it. 
come and let us cut it off from being a nation. Also thou shalt be cut down, O madman, the sword shall pursue thee. A voice of crying shall be from Horonaim, spoiling and great destruction. Moab is destroyed, her little ones have caused a cry to be heard. For in the going up of Luhith, continual weeping shall go up. For in the going down of Horonaim, the enemies have heard a cry of destruction. Flee, save your lives, and be like the heath in the wilderness. For because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures, thou shalt also be taken. And Chemosh shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together. And the spoiler shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley also shall perish, and the plain shall be destroyed, as the Lord hath spoken. Give wings unto Moab, that it may flee and get away, for the cities thereof shall be desolate, without any to dwell therein. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Moab hath been at ease from his youth, and he hath settled on his lees, and hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel, neither hath he gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remained in him, and his scent is not changed. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send unto him wanderers that shall cause him to wander, and shall empty his vessels and break their bottles. And Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. How say ye, we are mighty and strong men for the war? Moab is spoiled and gone up out of her cities, and his chosen young men are gone down to the slaughter, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. The calamity of Moab is near to come, and his affliction hasteth fast. All ye that are about him, bemoan him, and all ye that know his name, say, How is the strong staff broken, and the beautiful rod? Thou daughter that dost inhabit Dibon, come down from thy glory, and sit in thirst. For the spoiler of Moab shall come upon thee, and he shall destroy thy strongholds. O inhabitants of Aroa, stand by the way and espy. Ask him that fleeth, and her that escapeth, and say, What is done? Moab is confounded, for it is broken down. Howl and cry. Tell ye it in Arnon, that Moab is spoiled, and judgment is come upon the plain country, upon Holon, and upon Jehazer, and upon Mephia and upon Dibon, and upon Nebo, and upon beth Diblathaim, and upon Kiriathaim, and upon beth Gamel, and upon beth Meon, and upon Kerioth, and upon Bozrah, and upon all the cities of the land of Moab far or near. The horn of Moab is cut off, and his arm is broken, saith the Lord. Make ye him drunken, for he magnified himself against the Lord. Moab also shall wallow in his vomit, and he also shall be in derision. For was not Israel a derision unto thee? Was he found among thieves? For since thou spakest of him, thou skippest for joy. O ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities and dwell in the rock, and be like the dove that maketh her nest in the sides of the hole's mouth. We have heard the pride of Moab. He is exceeding proud. His loftiness and his arrogancy and his pride and the haughtiness of his heart. I know his wrath, saith the Lord. But it shall not be so, his lies shall not so effect it. Therefore will I howl for Moab, and I will cry out for all Moab. Mine heart shall mourn for the men of Kerhiles. O vine of Sidma, I will weep for thee with the weeping of Jazer. Thy plants are gone over the sea, they reach even to the sea of Jazer. The spoiler is fallen upon thy summer fruits and upon thy vintage. And joy and gladness is taken from the plentiful field and from the land of Moab. And I have caused wine to fail from the wine presses. None shall tread with shouting. Their shouting shall be no shouting. From the cry of Heshbon, even unto Eleeli, and even unto Jahaz, have they uttered their voice. From Zoar, even unto Horonaim, as an heifer of three years old. For the waters also of Nimrim shall be desolate. Moreover, I will cause to cease in Moab, saith the Lord, him that offereth in the high places, and him that burneth incense to his gods. Therefore mine heart shall sound for Moab like pipes, and mine heart shall sound like pipes for the men of Kerhires, because the riches that he hath gotten are perished. For every head shall be bald, and every beard clipped. Upon all the hands shall be cuttings, and upon the loins sackcloth. There shall be lamentation generally upon all the housetops of Moab and in the streets thereof. For I have broken Moab like a vessel wherein is no pleasure, saith the Lord. They shall howl, saying, How is it broken down? 
How hath Moab turned the back with shame? So shall Moab be a derision and a dismaying to all them about him. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, he shall fly as an eagle, and shall spread his wings over Moab. Kerioth is taken, and the strongholds are surprised, and the mighty men's hearts in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people, because he hath magnified himself against the Lord. Fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For I will bring upon it, even upon Moab, the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. They that fled stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of the force. But a fire shall come forth out of Heshbon, and a flame from the midst of Sihon, and shall devour the corner of Moab, and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones. Woe be unto thee, O Moab! The people of Chemosh perisheth, for thy sons are taken captives, and thy daughters captives. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days, saith the Lord. Thus far is the judgment of Moab.